Well, hello everybody. Welcome to the next episode of the Rusty Scale Show. This is part two of the Just For Fun ME109 or BF109 build. I used the Italeri kit in 172 scale to celebrate the 60th anniversary of Italeri models. I'll link the first video. You can go and check it out. If you do so, please do not forget to leave a like or leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Now for this one, um, I decided to go with the normal, with the classic marbling. I just black primed the entire model and then did a white marbling over it. For the lower surface, lower half of the body, uh, I used Ammo Mega Acrylic. But for the rest of the painting job, I strictly used AK 3rd Generation Acrylics. I started with medium grey for the upper surface, and the upper half of the fuselage. Now this 3rd Generation Acrylics, there are, uh, this paint is quite thick. So you have to thin it down thoroughly with the uh, AK acrylic thinner. Now for the third color, I did a camo masking by placing Patafix to create the camo and then just cover the parts with um, Tamiya masking tape. It's a pretty easy and nice way to mask for the camo. And the fourth and last color was deep red to create those red areas where the white Swiss National Cross decals will be placed. This is uh, after the first second coat, the first and second coat. This is not the finished result, of course. I place one or two coats and then let it dry. Meanwhile, uh, lay, another, lay some more coats on the stabilizer. And here is the finished result. So now I was very happy because it was time to seal the entire paint job uh, with a gloss coat. Uh, I applied first a very thin coat like a mist and then go over it with a, with a few full throttle passes like press down completely the uh, airbrush trigger and cover it with one or two passes to get a nice even glossy surface. Okay, so my plan was to start applying the decals but with my first decal that I want to apply the Swiss cross, I realized that that the red section, hey, whoa, what the hell? Okay, that the red section I painted here is not big enough for the decal. And I painted this according to the instructions. But the decal are, I mean the crosses here, the Swiss crosses, these decals, they are too big. They are too big anyway. They should actually be placed in here but they're way too big. Now I've thought about cutting it, but then the proportions wouldn't be, wouldn't be correct anymore. So what I have to do is to expand the red area. So I have to spray here. So instead of applying decals, I'll have to spray some more red. Same over here, same over here in this area. I have to make it bigger Otherwise, those decals would be would look way too big. I think, I think they will look way too big anyway. But like this, at least they'll fit in here, and there will be a, a you know. Then you can see the red because it has to be placed in the middle, 
not at the edge, straight at the edge. It has to be placed in the middle. So these decals, they are actually too big. And I checked for, um, I have an Airfix 172 scale um, BF109 Swiss version, and I checked their decals because I thought maybe they're smaller, I could use them, but they have ex exactly the same size. So um, I wanna check something here. Careful. Be careful. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. I checked the Tamiya Swiss message mate, um, with the same decals, and it appears that, yeah, the decals are not too big. They are not too big. They are, they are the correct. The size of the decals is correct. That would also, um, that would also explain why the Airfix decals have the exact same size. But here on the instructions, the Swiss cross is too small. Actually, it's too small because when you check it here, it will not touch the end. It will end. Um, if I place it on top, the upper part of the cross will go around the wing. That's where we're at. It will. It it would have to be go <laughs> bent around the wing, and that's surely not the idea. Th so this will go over the landing flaps. It will. It, it has to. I think it's just wrong in the instructions. So now it was finally time to apply the decals. I'm just gonna show you here in the video uh, that one certain decal. I used the Amomig decal set. Later on, I would also use, this is number one. Later on, I also used a decal fix. That's number two, but um, I, it was not, it's not documented in this video right here. I had to replace it a bit, so I, I reapplied some of the decal set to make this, the cross really uh, lay down into the surface. The decals are quite thick. The quality is, n is like, I don't know, I would give it like 80%, 80% maybe. So um, yeah, it, it would, it would have been better maybe to use the Tamiya Strong, but I wanted to try out the Amomig decal solutions. Now dry brushing, I really start enjoying using this Amomig dry brush color to dry brush all the edges. Dip the brush into the paint, get rid of most of it, and then start applying it over the edges. You can also always use your finger. It's like an additional brush you have, or, or an additional tool you have. So, time to bring out the diamond file. This is a very delicate job to actually sand down the edges of the clear parts but I think with the diamond file, which is actually supposed to be used uh, for PE parts, to clean the PE parts, it works very well on canopy parts as well. So after the clear bath, it was time to mask the canopy. I didn't have a masking set, so I made my own masks. I simply used a pencil, marked the areas of the windows, took off the tape, and cut those marked areas out. The 
last cut is always the most delicate one. You can mess everything up with the last cut. And then simply place the right piece onto the right window. Now this technique is not a perfect, it's not perfect, um, but it's a just for fun build. So it's a, it's a fast technique. It's a fast technique with a good result. Maybe not a perfect result. You could do better. You can always do better. Then of course also paint the clear parts. I use the RLM 66 first which is the interior color so from the inside you can also you will see the RLM 66 and then after that I covered it with the dark gold gray to paint the exhaust I use different types of rust colors thin them down quite thoroughly and then apply apply them with my cool bended brush I started with the bright color and then went darker That protecting shield, which was added to the cockpit to protect the pilot, I had to glue it on with some PVA glue. Now it's time to wait until the glue has dried. I thought in the meanwhile, why not remove the canopy masks? I always clean them again with, uh, with the floor shiner just use a cotton butt and clean it a bit. I wanted to build it with an open canopy. So to stabilize that uh, piece, I just used a big bubble ball of Patafix. Kind of painted on the PVA glue, then carefully placed that open canopy part. put it in place, make sure, make sure it sits correctly, hope there's no glue bounded together with a pot of fix or something, and then let it sit there. And hope for the best. So I used the uh, Rebel pigments from this weathering set. I bought this a few years ago and I find that mud green is a very nice color um, yeah, to weather the wheels a bit. I simply dry brushed it on, brushed it into the surface a bit and then cleaned the residue with the big flat brush. just to add a, a dust effect to the wheels. Not too much, just a bit. But these parts of the landing gear day, I wanted them to really shine. So I, I brush painted them with gloss, with a gloss coat separately. Oh, I don't know how many times I lost this piece. Okay, time for the rigging. I use this, uh, the 0.2 millimeter and Rocket Rapid Super Glue. Brushed on some glue. Apply the wire. I, I really love that work because usually it's the, the, the very final step of the build and uh, yeah this is also uh, some of the final moments of the video so I hope you enjoyed the build. Dale, dale, dale.
Okay, now it was time to remove the pad fix, which was stabilizing my canopy part, and I really was a bit afraid that it could tear off everything because it was sitting there for quite a moment, but fortunately it went fine. So we are close to the finishing line. Few more weathering steps are here in the video. I hope you enjoyed the build. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did so, do not forget to hit the like button and maybe considering subscribing to the channel so you'll get a notification whenever I upload new content and it will help my channel to grow a lot more than you may think. So upcoming now is a little short slideshow of the finished build. I lay down a beat and put together some photos. I hope you enjoy it and uh, see you in the next video, guys.